Some stories are so good that if they didn't happen, they should have. Urban legends fall into this category. Tales about the unexpected dangers of modern living, or spooky accounts of mad slashers and warnings from the grave. They're strange and fun to tell, but are they mostly true or just urban gossip? I'm Natasha Henstridge. In the next hour, we'll unearth the surprising truth behind urban legends. Strange killers are a favorite theme of urban legends because few things are as scary as a killer we don't understand. But in the following story, we may not even know who the killer is. This story is sometimes set near Jacksonville, Florida. A waitress heads for her car late one night after finishing her shift at a local restaurant. She pulls out of the parking lot when suddenly an old man in a white nightshirt spattered with blood steps into her headlights. He yells at her and pounds desperately on the car window. Terrified, the young lady locks her door, then hits the gas and races off. Shaken, she tries to calm herself and turns on the radio. It's then she hears a news bulletin claiming that a serial killer called the Slasher struck again earlier that day. The Slasher is wounded. He's also armed and very dangerous. Turning off the radio, our waitress continues her drive home, then notices that she's almost totally out of gas. Anxious, she keeps her eyes peeled for a gas station. Then, when she comes to a stop sign, out of the dark, the screaming old man in the bloody nightshirt reappears. Get away from my car! Leave me alone! Open this door, again, he pounds on the window. And again, she floors it and speeds away. Looking back, she sees the man actually chasing her. Finally, she spots a gas station and pulls in. But looking around, the place seems deserted. Then the old man appears again, right outside her car. Get your hands off my car! Petrified, she grabs her phone and calls the cops. But no sooner does she contact them than the mysterious old man vanishes. There is a man that has been following me. A cop arrives soon after, and our waitress is relieved. She tells him her incredible story. But as the police officer looks over her car, he notices something. In her back seat is none other than the slasher. Weak from a wound, he's been hiding in the back of her car. A shocking discovery. But even more chilling is what the woman learns when she sees the evening paper. In it is a photo of the killer's most recent victim, the old man in the nightshirt, the ghost of his last victim trying to save her from the slasher. Just another ghost story? Or is anything about this tale for real? The story has no clear date of origin perhaps because it's a kind of second-generation urban legend. This seems to me in some sense a combination of legends, the killer in the backseat legend, plus aspects of the vanishing hitchhiker legend. Uh, in the vanishing hitchhiker, the ghost returns to the place where she was killed. Ghosts often return to the scene of a crime or to correct some kind of misfortune or to exact retribution. But is it a fear based on reality or on a campfire story. A visit to Becker Automotive Design makes you wonder. Here you can see the lengths to which fearful drivers will go to defend themselves against unknown threats. Over the last couple of decades, there's been a general perception and probably reality of a rise in violence in our society. The general perception is how do I, in fact, protect myself? The glass that we utilize when we're using handgun level protection is about 21 millimeters thick. Generally in the body panels, pillar posts, all the other areas in the car, 
floor and ceiling very often. We use a material that's used commonly in bulletproof vests. These supercars also come equipped with video displays, high-speed internet, satellite phones to call for help, and special anti-grab door handles. Three. Of course, all this might be good against the slasher, but it's not too effective against a ghost, which is the main source of terror in the legend. It's also the hardest part to believe, especially since this ghost can't even enter a locked car. But in the urban legend, the ghost is not the real threat. It's actually a victim trying to save another victim. This surprising plot twist suggests the legend is untrue because it's a familiar, dramatic device. In Charles Dickens's A Christmas Carol, uh, you do have ghosts that return uh, to try and straighten out the life of Ebenezer Scrooge. The helpful ghost is a very well-known motif in folk narrative. But aren't tales of visitors from the grave just make-believe? Or is there really something credible about getting urgent messages from the great beyond? It was about a, a lady who passed over. Well, James von Prague, a self-proclaimed spirit medium, makes a pretty good living claiming he talks to the dead. And the fact is, he really does. What's in question is if the dead talk back. To watch Van Prague work, it seems like they never shut up. I also see a J for some reason. I don't know why, but the initial J comes in very, very strong. I don't see Jonathan or Jim or uh, J. Josh. Josh. Is that his name? Josh? Yes. Yeah. Th thank you. <laughs> That's how it works. It's easy. There are some spirits who are very effective at showing themselves. The medium can see, myself, I can see a solid figure from head down to toes. With mediumship, it takes a long time to develop. For many years, I had to sit, learning how to open myself up and be receptive to spirit. Clearly, the woman in the legend has no problem in this department. She sees dead people. But there's another issue. There have been occasions, I'm sure, that um, my interpretation was not right. That happens as well, too. And that's a problem she does have. Fearing the helpful messenger while being totally oblivious to a killer in the back seat. Surely this part of the legend is just a scare story, right? As it turns out, something much like this actually happened. In the quiet town of North Augusta, South Carolina, a backseat attacker struck an unwitting victim in January of 2003. I went across the street to the grocery store. Um, I ran in for just a second. I come back out and got my car. As soon as I shut my door, something came around my neck. Um, really tight, and I heard a man's voice. The man, armed with a knife, instructed Denise to drive to a remote location. As he was going down that road, he had got a knife and he started just cutting me, taunting me, not cutting me deep, but just all over my face. And he cut my shirt all the way down. She knew she had to act before he got her alone. I kept thinking about my son. And so I knew I had to do something. And I seen a huge embankment, and I floored it, and I just hit it head on. She then ran from the car and got help from another motorist, then called the police. They never found her attacker, and the event continues to haunt her. When I first got in my car, I checked my back seat, I checked my front seat, I checked everything before I even opened the door. So the legend of the backseat slasher is mostly true. The only part unproven is the detail of the helpful ghost. But some even believe this. I really believe in guardian angels. I believe I had one looking over me that day. I know I did. Open the door! In this story, the victim was lucky to escape death. But there are others where a belief in luck becomes the cause of death. True or false? During wartime, the seal of the President of the United States is modified so that the eagle's head faces the arrows instead of the olive branch. The answer, when we return. Is the seal of the President of the United States changed during wartime so that the eagle faces the arrows? False. 
Since 1945, the eagle has always faced the olive branch.